Hey everybody, we are back with Little Bear, also known as Mason Greenblatt. That Hello, that would be me. <laughs> Robert Greenblatt here, also known as Papa Bear. So uh, Mason asked me a question recently. Uh, what was that question? Short sales. Um, what are they? How, <laughs> how do you explain it? You know? Yeah, it's a great yeah. question. So, you know, Mason's been licensed for a few years now, and in reality, he has not experienced a market where short sales were, I'd say, popular in a bad way, I guess. Popular is probably a bad word for that. So I'm going to take a few minutes here, guys. And Mason, you just stop me, too, because I'm kind of I want to teach you. I figured if I'm going to teach you about it. Right. We said, let's just make a video. So we're making a video about it. Um, it. In essence, what a short sale means is that I owe more on my home to the mortgage company or other liens, but I owe, let's just keep it with mortgages to keep it simple. So I owe more on my house than it is worth. Now, the last few years since you've been in the business, we've seen prices steadily climb. So that has not been too many opportunities to help folks that are in a distressed situation uh, and negotiating a short sale. But in essence, I may owe $300,000 on my mortgage, but what happens if my home's only worth two fifty? dollars But who decides that it's worth two fifty? dollars Well, you know? as a real estate professional, our job is to figure out approximate market value, right? So the, the word short in short sale is means shorting the mortgage. So what essentially happens is in that scenario, let's just use that $300,000 mortgage balance and 250 market value. In essence, what happens is we end up negotiating with the mortgage company and saying, hey, I know the house is worth 250 and I know that they owe 300. We, we have a buyer here for 250. Can you just let them off the hook and, and let the title go? Let this homeowner move on with their lives and let these other buyers buy it. That's, that's like the gist of it. Um, one thing too, it's off, all, also a misnomer is that short sales, while we are shorting the mortgage, the process Mason is not short at all. It is actually long, should almost be called a long sale. <laughs> yeah, it could take like six months or even a year. You know, I've seen them take as little as a couple of months. But when, you know, years ago when we had some market changes and disruptions, it, you know, on average, I would say was four or five months, but I've had them take a year or even longer. So maybe six months is a good average. So the next question that usually comes up is like, you know, who can qualify for a short sale, right? Because if I have a really good job and I just happen and make plenty of money and I just happen to owe more in my house than it's worth, is the mortgage company going to, I mean, owe more, yeah, owe more in my house than it's worth. Is the mortgage company going to let me off the hook for, in our example, 50 grand? Probably not. Know. Probably not. So the other thing that, that kind of comes into play here, which is really important, is what's the financial hardship? What what is going on with this seller that they deserve to get off the hook, right? In the bank's or mortgage company's opinion. And it could be a lot of different things, right? But first and foremost, it's usually some sort of financial hardship, which means a change of income, right? Uh, and that change of income could be, God forbid, someone loses their job or they get a pay cut and they can't make their payments. Um, a relationship changes, someone passes away and they can't carry it by themselves. It could be so many different things. Um, so in most cases, not always, but the majority of cases, the homeowner is behind on their mortgage, right? Going into pre-foreclosure. Often they could be in that whole foreclosure process, which in New Jersey typically takes a while. But they could, you know, they could have tried different workouts and modifications, which may or may not have been successful. Sometimes they are and they still can't keep up, um, you know, hoping things will change and they don't change financially for a particular 
person or people. So there's the, the financial hardship aspect. Now, here's another piece of it, too. To get approved for a short sale, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're unable to feed your children. Like literally, I mean, there has to be a hardship, but it doesn't mean that somebody has to be like totally financially decimated in order to get a short sale approved. It's going to vary from lender to lender, from situation to situation. Look, we, we deal with every kind of human. You've heard me say that before. So everybody's situation is going to be different. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. so no two are the same. So when this was going on more so a few years back, basically it's just sitting and talking and just trying to understand their situation. Um, but, you know, honestly, I've seen short sales get denied by lenders that, I really believe should have been approved. And I've seen others get approved that I actually thought like, I can't believe they approved it, you know? So there's all kinds of other stuff that goes on in the background with these mortgage companies or servicers when they're reviewing them. And there's different incentives that they have to approve or not approve. It's my understanding. I'm definitely not an expert on what goes on on the mortgage side of it when they're trying to review. But um, there's, there's elements, you know, the, again, the gist of a short sale is I owe more than my house is worth. How do I get out from under it? Like, how do I move on with my life and stop this from being a foreclosure? Short sale is always a better alternative than letting the house get foreclosed on. Because, and that's actually a big question that, that comes up a lot is, you know, some people say, I don't care. Just let it go to the bank. What's in it for me, right? Yeah. What's in it for me? Well, if a home gets foreclosed on in that big stack of mortgage papers that we all signed when we bought houses, buried in that paperwork, the mortgage company has the right, if they foreclose on the house, let's give an example, that $250,000, uh, that $300,000 house, they foreclose on it. Then they go and sell it. And they have other costs associated with it. So they really didn't even get to the 250 market value that we use in our example. Maybe they ended up with 225 or even 200. Let's yeah. say 200. Now the bank, mortgage company, I keep using that interchangeably, they lost 100 grand, right? Yeah. They're owed 300. They netted two. In that big package of papers that we all signed, they have a right to pursue a deficiency judgment which basically means that even when you thought this was over as a homeowner and you walked away and said, I'm just done, I don't care. Years later, because it often could take a few years till they catch up with that stuff, they could pursue you for that $100,000. Side note, I'm told it doesn't happen often. They can pursue the previous homeowner. Well, they can. Yeah. So like the homeowner that walked away can and be got foreclosed on, they could go after that homeowner for the $100,000 loss that, that they had as a lending institution on that property. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So it's always better. I always tell people it's always better. Let's try the short sale. Let's see if we can get you approved for it because some of the, if the short sale gets approved, what we're looking for in that documentation, and we do that with the assistance of an attorney, of course, but what we're looking for is that there will not be any kind of deficiency due or owed or pursued later because we know the bank mortgage company has taken a loss on it. But we want to make sure that once you're done, you're done. And here's another piece you probably don't know. Sometimes, and there's all kinds of variables, sometimes that lending institution will provide a financial incentive to the seller for participating. Huh? So the mortgage company is going to lose money and they're going to give some money to the homeowner that's short selling their house. Sounds weird, right? Yeah. Um, so the uh, it's true. That's basically what happens. I've seen it be a thousand dollars. I've seen people get fifteen thousand dollars. 
again, I don't know how they decide who's worthy of what and what programs make sense, but that's what I've seen happen too, because it's also in the lender's best interest to kind of move things along rather than wait out a foreclosure process for somebody who's experiencing a tough time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so we have the seller incentives. Um, you can have a couple of dollars in the bank. It will vary. Uh, usually they won't go after retirement accounts if there's money in a retirement account, uh, unless it's really, really substantial amount of funds. Then they may say, well, no, they have to make up the difference. They can't just get off the hook. If you have a couple million dollars in a retirement account and you're trying to stick it to the bank for, in our case, 50 grand, probably not going to approve it. But, um, you know, when the market is in a declining state or property is over leveraged and the market just isn't keeping up, you know, sometimes and and then and of course, it, as a homeowner, if you're experiencing a financial hardship, a short sale sometimes is a really good alternative to to kind of hit the reset button and get this off your back. Yeah, I know I simplified it a lot. It's 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 a process. And there's a lot of other pieces to it, but I hope that helps. Do you understand it a little bit better now? Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. sure we'll talk about it. Later. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. Any questions, let us know. Feel free to comment below. Happy to help in any way that we can. Smash that subscribe button, hit that like button, and feel free to watch one of these other videos floating around up here. We have Mason Greenblatt. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. Thanks.